Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Healing School. I'm Pastor Justin, and it's my honor to be able to deliver the word today concerning God's will to heal you. Hallelujah. And that's what these classes are. We don't talk about anything else in Healing School but healing. So we go through the scriptures, we find out what does God say about it, how does it pertain to you, and then what's our part in receiving what God has promised to us. And so thank you again for tuning in. We've got, uh, I don't know, dozens and dozens of videos that we've done over the years uh, on healing. And so you can go back in the archives, keep yourself built up on the word. Listen, if you need or are in need of healing, dial in on what the word says about it. So we're going to do that today. If you have a Bible, let's turn to first Peter chapter two, verse 24. And this is probably one that you are aware of. You probably quoted this. You probably quote this. <clears throat> I know I do. I quote it regularly. And uh, we're contending. Hallelujah. We live in a fallen world. God is not putting sickness on us, but because uh, sin and death has reigned in this world, uh, you can just walk out here. And um, if it wasn't for God's healing power, the, perver uh, the preserving nature of the word, uh, and, and uh, you know, his spirit working in us and on us, uh, you know, you just walk out here and, and, you know, hundreds of germs, diseases, sicknesses are just waiting to pounce on you. Um, hallelujah. His word is definitely keeping us. Um, and th the things that he's in built into our bodies are keeping us healthy and strong. But God's not the one putting them on you. They're the result of, of, of sin and death, the fall of man. And so, you know, we're just going out here. Occasionally, we are susceptible to these things. Occasionally these things uh, try and work against us or they'll try and latch on to us. What do we do when we're faced uh, with those types of situations? All right. <clears throat> so here it is, Second Peter, excuse me, First Peter 2.24. It says, by whose stripes you were healed. Now the wording is very important. If you're familiar with this, uh, then you're probably familiar with the other reference to it in Isaiah. And there, the prophet Isaiah is looking forward to what Christ was going to do by taking stripes on his body. By his stripes, we are healed. And he's looking forward prophetically to that time uh, happening when Jesus would actually flesh that out. Here, Peter's looking back because in Peter's day, it would have been uh, previous. Jesus had already take his stripes on his body. So here we see that it's a done deal. He's looking back to it when it was ultimately finalized. By his stripes, you were healed. Very interesting then, we could say this, God is not going to heal you because he's already healed you in Christ Jesus. That was the payment. And in that act, uh, something was uh, done for you and then set apart for you, stored up in abundance for you to make a withdrawal from at any time you would need it after that point. The Living Bible says, His wounds have healed ours. Again, past tense. It already purchased um, our access to it. Now, I like to say it like this. If you were healed, then you are healed. <laughs> we're talking about as uh, the finished work of Christ concerns you. You may still have symptoms in your physical body. You, the doctor may be able to actually see something going on in your physical body. They have diagnosed what it is. There is something not right in your physical body. Nobody's denying that. But what we're saying in Christ, though, he already foresaw, okay, and then made provision for. And so that's what we are referring to when we say, I am the healed of the Lord right now. By his stripes, I uh, I was healed uh, by his stripes. You were healed. These are all past tense references because we're saying it was already taken care of there and it was stored up for me. Should I need to make a withdrawal from it? And so let's say you're dealing with something now. Well, you're present tensely aware something's wrong. So where are you going to go? You're going to go to him who has already seen and made provision. He's our provider, literally being able to see ahead, above, beyond, in the future. He had eyes to see. So his work on the cross provided for in advance, future, he already stored it up uh, in future quantities, say, in advance, you and I are here now, and we didn't make a withdrawal. Well, it's already been stored up for us to draw 
from. That's why we refer to it in present tense. No, again, nobody's denying that anything's going on in our bodies, but we're needing to recognize where do I go now to get the supply that I need to take care of this. Um, he supplies all of our need. Right now, I'm in need of physical healing. Where, where, where am I going to go? I'm going to look back to the work that he did when he stored it up in advance for me, when he took stripes on his body and took care of the need that I might have, future tense speaking, he took care of that need for me by storing it up in advance and then gave me the access to it at any time through his name. All right, Acts 17, 28, it says, For in him we live and move and have our being. Some people are waiting on God to do something or to give them something, but he has already done all he's going to do concerning uh, mine and your healing. In Christ, he has already given to you and I our healing. That's why, again, we go back and we reference Acts 17. In him we live and move and have our being. It's in him that we have what we need. It's been stored up in his name, stored up in him. You and I have access to him by the Spirit, and so we can make a withdrawal there. Hallelujah. Jesus, I'm, I'm telling you, Jesus the Christ is living in perfect health. Our healing is there. That's where we, ac uh, we access it. Again, Christ took upon himself our wounds, your wounds, my wounds. He took upon himself our sicknesses. He took your sickness. Whatever you've been diagnosed with, he's already took it. Uh, and diseases, whatever you've been diagnosed with, whatever names, whatever they're calling it, it doesn't matter. Uh, there's a reference. I don't think I have it in my notes here, but there's a reference. You know, it, it mentions several things, and it says anything else that's not even mentioned here. So he covered everything. Whatever new names they would come up with, whatever sinister things, um, you know, technology would uh, be able to create, uh, you know, COVID, you know, COVID schmovid. You know, if, if you're watching this, we've lived through several years of some crazy stuff. You know, they probably didn't have, you know, you didn't find COVID in the Bible. They probably didn't know anything about it. But he covered that when he said whatever isn't listed here. And so thousands of years after Christ Jesus took those stripes on his body, those same stripes have still purchased whatever healing we need for whatever they've come up with, all right? We have protections, but then should we um, actually be assaulted, you know, oppressed? Remember, Jesus was anointed. He went about healing all those who were oppressed. Let's say some oppression has come on us. Then there's provision to get that oppression off of us in the healing provided by Christ Jesus. Okay, he's anointed to still do that today, just like he was at any time that he physically walked on the earth. So he took these wounds, sicknesses, diseases. He bore them on the cross so you and I didn't have to bear them. Listen, no sense in, in two of us bearing this. This is how we get it off of us because he already bore it. All right, the purchase price was paid so you and I could have access to the supernatural power of life at any time. Romans 8, 11 says, But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the uh, dead will also give life, watch this, to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. Now, specifically, in context, this is speaking of um, uh, our dead body, is that the Spirit of God dwelling in us will cause our dead body. Paul referenced it. Uh, he said those who um, have gone on to be with the Lord, okay, if Jesus hasn't come to gather us to himself yet, then some people may die. All right, he said those, those people, they're absent from the body right now. They're present with the Lord. But there's a promise, though, concern, concerning the body that sleeps in the ground. He said it'll be resurrected. Now, this is the first meaning of this passage. The first contextual reference here is to these bodies being quickened by um, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. It will also raise these bodies from their slumber. They're in the ground asleep. The, the Spirit of the man is with the Lord, but the physical body is in the ground. It'll uh, cause it to be resurrected and then totally transformed. Okay, that's the first meaning of, of this passage. It says it will quicken these bodies and it shall be new and living again. But listen, um, <clears throat> that same function though, uh, you and I have access to now 
in the sense of that the same spirit that administers this resurrection of the body is the same spirit that ministers the healing anointing, or the, it's the same anointing uh, uh, that, ra- let me say it like this, the same anointing that raises the dead will heal cancer, okay? It may be a different work to a different extent, but the same uh, spirit that raises the dead will heal any sickness, will heal any disease. We know, we know people, uh, we personally know people that had died. I mean, they've got doctor verification. This person's dead, okay? There is no function here. Uh, there's no heartbeat. There's no blood flow. There's nothing. Uh, and they've been resurrected from the dead. There's several stories in the Bible even of people being raised from the dead. It's, it's the same spirit. You understand what I'm saying? It's the same spirit that will quicken the body from the dead. It's the same spirit that will heal a, a burn on your arm, a cut on your leg that will get rid of poison ivy. It's the same spirit that will heal, heal a deaf ear, same spirit that will cause you to see better if you've got something going on in your lungs. It's the same spirit that raised you know, some dead dude here. It's the same spirit that will bring healing to this guy that's alive that's just got something plaguing his body. It's the same Holy Ghost. Really, it's the same healing anointing, just to varying degrees and extents of operation here. So while we need to keep the integrity of the first uh, contextual meaning of that verse, it's also telling us that this Spirit is going to help us. The same Holy Ghost is going to help quicken our bodies so that you and I can finish our race. Hallelujah. Uh, Listen, diseases, sicknesses, uh, uh, ailments, infirmities, uh, tr- you know, things that come against the physical body in some, some way, these are all devilish ultimately, and they're trying to uh, stop you, hinder you, kill you, keep you from glorifying God in the body, keep you from um, uh, furthering uh, the Father's plans, the advance of the kingdom, etc. cetera. The, all these oppositions, these physical issues, it's opposition to you, uh, finishing your race, opposition to uh, God, fulfilling in you what he started in you. So we've got lots of footing and standing here to stand against these things as not being from God and and being as they're expressed an oppression from Satan or the devil. All right, the King James Bible uh, reads that verse. It says, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Really, it's in the body of mortality is where we need healing because that's the part that's susceptible to decay. Okay, that's why it, 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 it's, it, it, it can break. It can break down. It can break down prematurely. That's why we need to access that spirit of life that's within so that things can be repaired, replaced, fixed, whatever, uh, and, and so that we can go on and continue. The word quicken is the Strong's number 2227, and it means to vitalize or revitalize. It means to bear or produce life. It means to cause to live. Some people, they've received a death diagnosis. They're still technically alive, but but the diagnosis is on a trajectory towards death. Well, uh, to quicken means to cause to live, so it could reverse. Come on, it would reverse that diagnosis. It has the power to, anyways. It means to restore life. Okay, so this is talking about the resurrection from the dead. Many people have been resurrected from the dead. I mean, we have actually fundamental doctrines concerning Hebrews chapter 6, concerning the resurrection of the dead, but many people have been resurrected from the dead. The uh, dead. So many stories in the Bible, let alone personal stories that you've heard of, other accounts of people that have been resurrected from the dead. In fact, I'm thinking of somebody now, they died three times, three times, and then uh, w- were resurrected every time. Hallelujah. I mean, wow. Uh, I haven't had to experience that. Um, praise God. I've not been in a situation where that was needed. But I have experienced a quickening in my mortal body where something was not working right. It was either you know a direct strategy against me or a result of just bumping around in this fallen world, whatever, still something was plaguing me. It's it's ultimately an oppression, and I've been delivered out of that more than once. Hallelujah. I thank the Father for it. Uh, This word quicken, it means to cause to live, to restore to life. It means to bear or to produce life. It means to vitalize or revitalize. 
It means to give increase of life, and it means to empower with divine life. In Nehemiah, Old Testament reference here, chapter 9, verse 6, it says, You alone are the Lord. You have made the heavens, the heavens, the, the heaven of heavens, with all their host, the earth and everything in it, the seas and all that is in them, and you preserve them all. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father, for it. This word preserve, I wanted to add this here. This word preserve is, uh, if you want to look it up using the Strong's. Strong's is not the end all, but it's a good place to start. Strong's number 2421. It means to revive. It means to continue, continuously revive. Uh, it means to live prosperously. It means to sustain increase. It means to sustain life. It means to remain alive, and it means to continue living. Now, it's used in several verses to describe someone being restored to health. For example, it's used in 2 Kings 5-7 where a leper was restored to health. But the point is, is that uh, we'll see provision made by God in Christ. Can you say that's where it's uh, preserved in Christ, is reserved in Christ. It's hidden in Christ for you. Uh, he's made provision in Christ by the Holy Spirit. We can have our bodies quickened and or preserved until we finish our race and complete our purpose on the earth. Listen, it's the Spirit that does both. He quickens and he also preserves. Now, I, uh, I have this kind of um, outlook is, uh, you know, because people mock, right? You know, especially people that teach like we do, um, that we teach that God wants to heal you um, for whatever reason from whatever's plaguing you. God wants to see you healed. Uh, now, there may be some wisdom and counsel that goes along in this process, but ultimately healing is the end, is the end game. Okay. And sometimes people mock us and ridicule us, and they'll mock us by saying things like, <laughs> you know, you know how they laugh. <laughs> you know, oh, what, you're just going to live forever? You're going to live forever? No, 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 no. It's appointed for a man to die once. But uh, but we're told that he has pre-planned certain things for us. Okay. We find out that there is the Hebrew word, Derek, like there is a God-ordained path for us to walk. Like there is a work and assignment for us while we're here. We're here on purpose, with purpose. We're not just randomly floating around here. And so this quickening, this preserving, this access to healing, it's not to keep you alive forever, okay? We're not teaching you know, you'll become immortal. That, that's, we become immortal when he appears and catches the bride up in the rapture. Okay, that's totally different. But in the meantime, in the present age, we've got something to do. This is where his heart towards healing is to keep us alive so that we could finish our race. Healing is provided not so that we could live forever, it's so that we could finish our race. And as soon as we're done, we just step out of this body and go home. But until then, I'm telling you, we are resisting the works of the enemy. We're resisting the oppression of the devil. And we're using that quickening, life-giving access of the Holy Spirit in order to bring healing to our physical bodies. If you need it in your toes, get it in your toes, your ankles, your, your legs, your hips, your waist, your abdomen, your internals. Come on, shoulders, arms, fingers, head, brain, eyes, whatever. We are accessing that preserving uh, capability by way of the Holy Spirit to keep us alive until we accomplish our race. You know, this is, I want to add this thought in here too. You know, as a believer, we're not going to stand before the great white throne judgment. Okay, that's at the very end of time. The judgment that's for you and I in the afterlife is the judgment seat of Christ. Okay, at that judgment right there, we receive rewards for the deeds done in the body. Now, listen, nobody is judging anybody for going home early. Somebody dies of cancer, somebody dies of some other situation, or maybe there's an accident, a tragic ac uh, accident or whatever. Nobody's judging anybody. I'm not, I'm not judging you. I don't want you to judge me. We're not judging anybody for um, going home early, and maybe the catalyst was some sort of sickness or disease. 
But here's what we're telling those in the land of the living. Obviously, what good is our counsel to those who are already with the Lord? We all want to be there. We're all, uh, that's our trajectory. We're groaning within to be there with him. But uh, there is something, though, that is of consideration in the present time, and that's the rewards for us giving glory to God in the body. We're going to be rewarded for those things, people we tell about him, people that are born again, people that we pray with to get filled with the Holy Ghost, speak in tongues, different ministry activities that we do, um, inspiring hope, sharing the gospel, uh, taking care of the poor, sowing seeds, you know, doing good things, good, good things. We're we're going to be rewarded for the things that we did in his name. Listen, that's motivation for you and I who are in the land of the living. We're not talking to dead people yet. We're talking to people who are still alive and haven't finished their race. You want to finish your race. Now, finishing your race doesn't mean you live to 100 years old. Some people are hanging out, and they're, and they're done. There's no need to be here if you're done. Just go on to be with the Lord. There's no sting in death. Just, just cross over. But for those of us that know we're not done, this is why we contend. This is why we fight. Why do we press in? Why do we fight the good fight of faith concerning his word on healing? It's so that we can get back to our race. So we can get back to doing what he's called us to do. Hallelujah. In light of the eternal rewards as we stand before him at the judgment seat of Christ. It's called the Bama seat. It's where rewards are given. Hallelujah. So there's some motivation there. Uh, if you don't have some sort of motivation, then the devil can just really drag you, drag you around uh, like a rag doll unnecessarily. Don't give him place by being complacent, um, you know, in your time here on the earth. Hallelujah, somebody. All right, now, some people are waiting on God to push healing on them. They'll say things like, if I'm healed, then I'll believe. Well, that's not how it works, friends. Um, uh, this, this is saying that I will believe when I see with my natural eyes, or I'll believe when I can feel no more pain or symptoms in my natural body. Some people are, are waiting to believe in healing after they don't feel any more pain and uh, really need to start believing uh, in healing now. <laughs> in fact, the pain in your body is actually telling you, hey, something's off here. Something's not right. Either you're being oppressed or there's something physically, literally physically going on in your physical body. And it needs to be addressed. So you, that's when you reach out by faith. You take a hold of his promises, okay? Just because you're in no pain doesn't mean, um, or let me say it like this. Some people wait. Well, you know, if healing was really uh, real, then I wouldn't be in pain. No, we receive what he's done first. We receive his word on it. Then the word begins to work in us. The Bible says that faith, come on, uh, now faith is the what? The substance of things Hope for we have put our faith on his word and his word becomes flesh it manifests as healing in our physical body you, you know this verse hebrews eleven six. 6 but without faith it is what impossible to please him i just quoted it but hebrews 11 1 says now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things what not seen to wait until you can see your healing is not faith. And um, God has arra already arranged the method by which it pleases to come. Let me say that one more time. To wait until you can see your healing is not faith. Um, to take it by faith means you may have to believe against your natural senses, your body saying, I'm hurting. Well, fine. Uh, that's what your body's designed to do. It's, it's, it's designed to communicate to you in such a way. But your spirit, man, is what's grabbing hold of the word of the Lord that says, by his stripes you were healed. And uh, God had already arranged the method by which it pleases to come. Healing pleases to come a certain way. Which way is that? By faith. You grab onto it first before you see any results of it in your physical body. Once you latch onto it by faith, once your spirit grabs hold of it by faith, guess what? That same spirit that dwells in you, what does it begin to do? It begins to quicken your mortal body. That's the way it pleases to come, friend. Healing comes by faith. At some point, to receive our healing, you and I are going to have to first acknowledge when God provided it. I always have to remind myself, listen, pain has a way of uh, disorienting uh, you and I. Sometimes pain can be uh, bring disillusionment. Sometimes pain can bring, you know, you just kind of want to give up. 
But this is why you and I got to go back to the word because it becomes an anchor. It becomes a rock upon which we navigate the storms of life, sickness and diseases, infirmities. These are storms that rage against us. Nobody is denying the reality of that storm. But you and I have to find our footing in order to navigate the storm. This too shall pass unless we lose our footing on the solid rock of the word and his promises and we allow that storm to blow us all over the place, hither and thither. All right, um, at some point we acknowledge, okay, when God provided it. We go back and we say, you know what? He already gave it to me. It's, it's, I'm not waiting on him. I need to go and make a withdrawal from it. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says that all of God's promises are yes where? In him, in Christ. The Amplified Classic says it phenomenally. It says, for as many as are the promises of God, they all, all the promises, they all find their yes, the Amplified says, or their answer in Christ. For this reason, we also utter the amen. What is amen? Generically, amen means so be it. And it says, we utter the amen to God through him to the glory of God. Now, here's what this is saying. All the promises and healing because uh, it was solidified in the atoning work, friends. Uh, all the promises are yes in Christ Jesus. Here's another way of saying that. Whatever promise you, you locate in Christ will never be a no. If you can find it in him. Now, I'm not talking about those ones that are outside of him. Those promises outside of him, I suppose, could very well be a no, but that's not what the Bible says. And our focus is, is on the ones that are in him. All the promises in him, in Christ, they are already a yes. If you locate it in Christ, in Christ, you don't even have to pray if it be thy will. If you have found it in Christ, it is his will. If you found it in Christ, you don't have to pray about is this yes or no. If you found it in Christ, it is a yes. Now, here's what the Bible is setting up for us. Once you locate the promise in Christ, all right, let's say healing. So you're going to go Look for healing in Christ Jesus. <laughs> okay, once you find it, this is what the Bible says do. Now you have a part. What's your part? you got to utter the amen to it. Once you see the promise, you have to give your amen. And we already said, what is amen? The, the Amplified adds it here, but you, you can do a word search on the word amen. But generically, it means so be it. So once you see this promise, you have to respond by saying, so be it. And you may have to get aggressive about it too. Listen, if you're passive about this, again, remember Mark 4, seed sown, the devil comes, he's going to set up all kinds of trips and traps and offenses, and he's going to try and rob the reality of that promise or that word from you. So you may have to get aggressive about it. You may have to put your foot down, so to speak, when it comes to your navigating the issues in your physical body. But here he says, once you see the promise, you've got to respond by saying, so be it. And what this does is it gives glory to God concerning the work that's going to be done in you. Again, we got to recognize that Christ, uh, Christ Jesus, he took stripes on his back over 2,000 years ago. And in that, God said yes to your healing. Secondly to this, you have to have settled God's yes on the issue, uh, and then you take it. If you don't take it, you won't have it. If you don't say so be it, you're not going to get it. People are waiting on God to make something happen for, for them. His part was to uh, preserve all these promises in Christ and give you access to it. Your part is to recognize it, acknowledge it, say amen to it, and then take it. Hallelujah, you take it by faith. If you don't take it, you won't have it. Even though it's God's will for you to be healed, proven by him sending Jesus to take sickness and disease on himself, the tide of the battle in your body won't shift until you call upon what is yours, until you take what is yours. Remember this in Proverbs 18, 21. This, this, this goes back to really the first work of faith is to uh, say, so be it. Okay, the first work of faith is uh, saying something. Okay, the second work of faith would be acting something. Uh, um, you know, something physical then. First act is your confession. Second act would be some sort of uh, work that is in agreement with your confession. All right, life and death, remember this, Proverbs 18, 21, 
life and death is in the authority or the power or the hand okay, of the tongue. So the first work of faith is to say amen or so be it. Okay, you are verbally, your, 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 your confession, okay, you are in line with your confession that this is so because life and death is in the power of the tongue. Second work of faith would be um, a, a corresponding action that would substantiate or support your confession, whatever that is. Now, James 4, 7 says that you and I have to resist the devil and any, of, uh, and, any and all of the devil's devices. And then after resisting him, based upon the victory in Christ Jesus, he will flee from us. Lastly, uh, to my point about the tide shifting in your favor concerning healing, According to Hebrews 3.1, Jesus is our high priest. Just, let me substantiate this just a little, more, a little bit more. He's our high priest because of our confession. Or we say it like this, Jesus is our high priest based on what we are saying. Now, the word confession, it's translated profession in uh, certain Bibles, but it, it means this, saying the same thing as, saying the same thing as, if Jesus is the high priest of our healing, it's because you and I are saying what he is saying concerning sickness and disease. If a promise of healing is in Christ, then we look to him and listen for him as to what he's saying about sickness and disease and our healing. Again, the first act of faith excuse me, would be our confession, would be the words out of our mouth saying, so be it to your healing. And then again, second to that would be some sort of work or action or activity that would substantiate our confession. Again, God's not going to push something on you and I we don't want. Uh, look at this in Psalm 56, 9. It says, when I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. This I know because God is for me. The Living Bible says, the very day I call for help, the tide of battle turns and my enemies flee. Listen, the very first thing we do in response is we say by his stripes. I mean, we've got to not we've got to confess. Listen, everybody around you is probably wanting you to just go ahead and, and say the obvious. Oh, I'm sick. I'm dying or whatever. I'm hurting. I'm this. I'm I'm that. This is what the doctor said. I have this, I have that. Whatever. I, I mean most people that's the pressure of the natural realm is for you to agree with the problem. But the way the Bible has set up our warfare, okay, is to, num number one, contradict what the devil is saying by saying what Jesus is saying concerning it. That's how he becomes our, the priest of our confession, the high priest of our profession. Once we acknowledge what's in him, of course, he is the word. So once we acknowledge what's in him concerning sickness and disease, we have to say the same thing he's saying. And I like this in Psalm 56. Again, people, they're not wanting to cry out. Um, they're not wanting to say anything. They're wanting God to acknowledge their plight and then do everything for them. But that's not what we see revealed here. Our part, man, what a, what a privileged part. I don't know if he could have made it any easier. It starts with our words. And again, we see here that David's, he says, when I cried out, uh, the living Bible, the very day I called out, the tide turned. It began to turn. Hallelujah. And victory came shortly. Um, let's see here. Mark eleven 22. We'll close here. So Jesus answered and said to them, uh, have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt it in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he, come on, says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask for when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Listen, close examination of this passage reveals to us that in verse 22, should not have read, have faith in God, but rather should have been rendered, have the God kind of faith. Then verses 23 through 24 describe to us uh, what God, who by faith, that he calls those things that be not as though they are. 
the God kind of faith, listen, commands, decrees, asks, and receives. That's what we see here in this passage. Now, don't get stuck like many people. Um, and uh, that's running to God after everything else fails. The Bible says to seek God first, and all of these promises will be added to us. Again, a lot of people, they're, they're doing anything and everything, going to er everybody but God, and then when everything else fails, then they go to God. Listen, he's merciful, and I've seen I don't know how many people healed through that same kind of scenario because God's so merciful and long-suffering. But listen, you and I could skip a lot of delay here and waste of time by just developing ourselves to go straight to him first. We go into the Word. We go to Christ. We find out what's been provided for us. Then we start giving our so be it to it. We start giving it the permission uh, to take upon itself flesh in our life by giving the command, the decree, uh, by making our confession, our profession align with what we find in the Word. Then what happens is we'll find that that Word begins to take upon flesh, and soon healing will completely manifest in your body. Listen, many people, when dealing with sickness and or disease or some financial crisis or whatever, they don't go to God. Um, or some of them, they go to God crying, screaming, begging, pleading, uh, pleading, telling him how big and bad their situation uh, is. They say that if God doesn't do something quickly, they'll die or lose this or that. Listen, but the Bible says, um, don't, 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 don't go to us. Don't go to God telling him how big our mountain is. Rather, tell the mountain how big God is. Hallelujah. Flip that thing around on the devil. He's the one oppressing you, trying to make you seem small. Turn it around on him. Reveal how big your God is to him. Make him feel so small. Resist him and he will flee. Hallelujah. Jesus said, we are to speak to the mountain and tell it to be removed. We are to enforce the word of the Lord and use the authority given to us through his word and in his name to resist the devil and any and all of his mountains. Now, I'm going to close with this last thought here. We are not denying or saying we are not sick. There's no power in saying that what is isn't. Okay, What the Bible tells us is call the thing that is not as though it were. We're not denying that there's something in our body. We're just denying the right of the thing to stay. Hallelujah. There's a promise that will bring to nothing the thing that is. We find that promise and we speak to that mountain and tell it to go. Hallelujah. Listen, friends, if we can uh, pray with you, if you'd like some special prayer, you, you can reach out, uh, excuse me, you can reach out to us. You can send us an email at hello at gracecitychurch.tv or you can call us with a prayer request at 870-741-9099. Leave a, leave a message and somebody will get right back with you. But listen, I want you to know you're not alone in this, okay? Uh, you've probably got somebody close by. Uh, if you'll ask them, say, hey, come into agreement with me concerning God's Word. Listen, if for some reason you don't have anybody anywhere near you, uh, then you can go before the Word yourself and lay hold of the promise. You don't need a somebody. I'm but um, if you need some encouragement, get a hold of somebody, or you can reach out to us. We'll agree with you concerning God's revealed promises for healing in your body. But listen, friends, kick that off. Hallelujah. Let that fight of faith rise up strong on the inside of you. Get tenacious. Get aggressive about your healing, friends. And I'm telling you, it will manifest in your body. Hey, listen, we're so honored that you joined us Um uh, join us again next Thursday. We do a healing school every Thursday, or you can go back in the archives, get built up, get filled up, hallelujah, and walk straight into your healing. Until next time, friends, bless you.